Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Dawn of Yang Chen chapter analysis video. This one's going to be for chapter 36, which is called The Display. So this is a very important chapter. Uh, this is the one where 100 absolute percent confirmed combustion benders. So we see it's, it's from Honcho's perspective. So we get to sort of, I suppose, get a little bit of a sense of at least one of the combustion benders' personalities. And it's the chapter in this book where we learn the most about the combustion benders. They still tease it and keep it a secret. They are not going all in on it just yet. But this, I think, will be the chapter that people go back to a lot between now and uh, Yang Chen Book 2. Uh, because there's probably the most here to speculate on. But interestingly, it's not just about, you know, finally revealing the combustion benders. This is also the chapter where one of them gets full on taken out. Yang Chen arrives back and she seems to immediately know how to counter combustion benders. And that will be an interesting thing to discuss in terms of pacing wise. Do people like that or do they see the potential for the future? Let's go through it. So... Like I said, from Hancha's perspective, so, you know, it says here, Hancha, who is arguably the most powerful man on the continent right now, have been reduced to a glorified porter. Because as I've talked about a little bit already, his plan is him and three combustion benders against the world. He is so cautious here. He only, he's the only person who truly knows about them. He is keeping them a secret from everyone he doesn't want to involve the other shang merchants in this it's just him and them and as we find out here the big thing with them the, anyway the problem with combustion vendors they need tons of food it's such an energy intensive ability he has to deliver them food constantly and the idea seems to be that like he has thapa here he's giving him food and so is talking to him here but the idea seems to be that he has to get food to the others as well. And so him trying to potentially achieve in a way some sort of like independence for Bin Ur, demonstrate dominance uh, over the Earth King. He doesn't really get much of a chance to enjoy this because the focus is so much on this like siege basically that is happening here. That there's no chance to truly rest in a way. Obviously, everyone's being super cautious about the combustion blast and how dangerous, deadly they are. We get the idea that um, Thapa is positioned more towards the front, sort of like facing the rest of the Earth Kingdom, the, the entrance from the rest of the Earth Kingdom into Bin Ur. That's where the Earth King's forces are coming in. He is said to be the most powerful, um, but I suppose least precise of the combustion benders. So he is in charge of basically holding off the army from entering. He is quite clever about it in that, like, obviously he's not directly blowing up people, but he's making sure to do enough warning shots and then especially to try and make sure that the ground collapses. So any sense of, like, a bunch of earthbenders trying to, like, tunnel in and sneak in that way means that they can't do that because what if it caved in and they got trapped underground? So they're, they're putting in all the strategy that they possibly can to make this work. But there's always that sense that what seems to be the case here, just in terms of organization logistics, this can't really last long enough. And in a way, the only thing he really has going for him is that the rest of the people don't know what it is. They don't know that it's people and they don't know like that it gets tired. Hancha is the only one who truly knows that like he has to feed these people. They will have to rest at some point. So like they basically have to take shifts. That's the only reason in a way that he's holding this off. Because I think if everyone knew that it was just three people, you could definitely do enough research on it to get a situation where you get them at the, the wrong time during a, a shift change and, and gain the advantage, which will kind of see is sort of what happens here and um, that the problem with this is that they're people they're not weapons they still have to eat and rest and that's the problem with them so this is where we get Hancha observing a combustion bender using their ability up close and um, Hancha put the food down to watch it was fascinating every time 
Thoppa began a series of inhalations, each one bigger than the last, until his chest ballooned in and out. When he got about 20 or 30 massive breaths taken, his eyes widened and he threw his head forward. His gut caved into his body and a rush of air lifted the debris in the room. There was a pop pop, an arrhythmic double drum beat, and then the roar. Far downfield over the snowy plain, a seed of fire flowered into a spherical inferno, boiling snow and hurling soil, sending ripples through the air. And he then goes on to compare it to like the idea that like, some might say it looks like fireworks, but this is nothing like that. This is a whole other level of power here that these blasts could level small cities. That's what we're getting at here. So 20 to 30 breaths. There, there's an interesting thing as you go through this in terms of analyzing what's happening here. One thing I definitely get the impression of is that these combustion benders compared to combustion man and pulley are very, very inefficient from an energy point of view. Just the fact that they have to have so much food so regularly as well. The fact that Thapa seems to have to do 20 to 30 breaths to do a powerful blast um, seems quite extreme. When if you look at sh shots of combustion man or pulley combustion bending, it's just a deep breath boom and they can do that sort of pretty you know consistently it's just you know that sort of reload is quite quick and sure you can maybe say that there's a sense where you still have to charge up a bigger blast but it feels like they have it down to a point where they can do a mid-range blast or even a powerful blast without needing to take 20 to 30 breaths so that's what we sort of uh, begin to learn about here in all of this so Thoppa is like, okay, the movement stopped for now. That one worked. That warning shot worked. But then it says, he rubbed his forehead in a strange way after the act, using the fingers of both hands to press into the skin above his eyebrows and stretch it apart. It was as if he needed to widen an imaginary hole in his head to relieve the pressure. So he's there like after he does the ability and he's there trying to basically like pull apart like a hole in his forehead, highlighting the idea these combustion benders do not have third eye tattoos. So this is before that gets discovered or something like that. I think very much highlighting that that is some sort of a thing that helps with the, you know, efficiency of energy. And it makes sense. Um, tattoos, we have a, a sense uh, just through like the, the airbender tattoos that they glow, that tattoos are sort of spiritual in Avatar to a certain degree, that if used in like the right spot, it does sort of help to sort of help chi flow in an area. And the third eye tattoo seems to represent that as well. And I, I think the impression I get is that it probably means they don't wouldn't have to take as many breaths before they attack and it wouldn't drain them of so much energy because it could flow through a little bit better. So if you view combustion bending as being sort of like psychic fire bending, you sort of get the idea that like, okay, it, it takes a lot of effort to do something like this, but if the the bit that makes it unique having to fire it out of your forehead if it was easier to do that obviously the whole thing would just work so much better and yeah um Hansha just notes that like th there's no other bending like this in the world it was so powerful and at such range that's that's the uniqueness of this it's got range and the most power imaginable that's what makes this so so devastating that no army is going to walk out in the open in front of that potential damage and um, and that's what is ultimately holding everyone back it's working but he's aware he's in a very very bad situation he says to him they're not meant to kill anyone here in any of this and um, at some point he needed business to resume or else he'd never get his money because again that's all Huncher wants he wants to get things back to normal he wants to i suppose keep the earth kingdom off his, uh, king off his back make his money and then get out. But he kind of doesn't seem to realize that he has gotten himself into a mess here. And in a way, the Earth King, regardless of what happens, is always going to remember what has happened here. And he's not really thinking about that. So Thapa takes a break to eat. And it just notes here that he consumed the food joylessly, washing down the half chewed mouthfuls with water so he could finish faster. If there was a downside, uh, at all to his technique it was the energy it drained from him and the time it took to gather enough strength for the next explosion 
Hansha shuddered to think of a bender who didn't have such a weakness. So they're really highlighting that there are major drawbacks to combustion bending that do not seem to be present among com uh, combustion man and Pali. In fact, like Pali is so skilled, she can curve her blasts while still doing them just as quickly and them still being exceptionally powerful. And then we get the question, kind of in a way what we've been wanting. He asks Thapa, how did you come by this power? And Thapa just glances up at him and is just like, you know, it's a weird way to ask it for this ability that he has. He's like, bitter work, torturous training. I didn't find this ability like a coin in the street and neither did the others. We three are the product of significant investment. Interesting way to say it, but it's true. Again, it's highlighting that all the stuff that was said about the, the weapon from before is true. Research, time, money has gone into it, but it's abilities, bending abilities related to people, firebenders specifically. How does this work? What are the specifics? Uh, you look disappointed, Thapa said. Did you want me to say it was chance? A spiritual blessing? Because it was neither. I took a big gamble on myself to get to this point. I mean, a lot of us who tried to develop this technique drowned. And Hansha's like, whoa, 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 what? Drowned? Um, so what What does that mean? And when I did my spoiler discussion for Yang Chen, we had a big discussion about this. And it's an interesting one to consider. This is obviously, I'm guessing it's suggesting, you know, drowned in the sense of like water. So what what's going on here? And a few things I think people brought to the surface with this was, one, um, if breath control is so important, and they're really highlighting the idea of like, the chest like ballooning in and out like you have to have a huge lung capacity that one maybe it is just really heavy harsh training for people to just improve their lung capacity to like an insane degree to make the most of this ability and um, two what if they are testing the ability like underwater initially because that's some way to like dampen the blast or something like that that um it prevents you know I suppose maybe some of the sound being as extreme, the dangers initially, it might help that or something like that. That maybe there's some sort of a way when in training combustion bending, if you do it underwater, it's the safest way to learn it. But you need to stay underwater long enough. And of course, the ability requires you to use your breath carefully. So there's obviously a huge chance of drowning, I would guess. And um, they're there's some interesting ideas about it in terms of just the the breath control being important and the amount of breaths that are taken here uh, and then just the nature of the ability itself and like okay wh what's going on here so clearly a lot of people were involved in this project 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 unanimity and a lot of people died trying to develop this technique now Based on everything we know about special bending techniques, there is a sense that like you have to be a bender. So all of these people had to have been firebenders, otherwise they couldn't perform the technique. So I'm, I'm guessing that ultimately what we're meant to connect here is just that um, Dushim, and I suppose more recently Chaisi, has realized that firebenders who are giant, tall, and powerful potentially have a high likelihood of being able to develop this combustion bending uh, ability. Now, it will be interesting to see how they go into that in terms of like, do they just explain it that way because the tech, anyone can learn the technique, but it is better if you're large because I guess you have like bigger lungs, bigger capacity, the knockback of the explosions won't be as damaging to you. And that's just a practical thing. Or... Is there something more to it in terms of maybe uh, li bending lines? And that's people from specific regions are more likely to be taller, uh, are more likely to have this ability. I I'm guessing we'll go into that to some degree because, again, it is notable now that all five combustion menders we know about are all tall, powerfully built, of course, from, from uh, the Fire Nation and, in a way, potentially mysterious origins. In that combustion man is this giant from who knows where. Um, Pali, of course, we know at, at least at some point in her history, 
was on some obscure fire island and taken prisoner by a warlord. So that highlights something related to maybe some of the lesser known fire islands. And, and especially because Chaisi herself has her origins on an island in between the Fire Nation and the Earth Kingdom, it speaks to the idea that maybe she was one of the ones who figured out that this is the case. You're obviously going to ask the question straight away of like, okay, how did this come about? There has to be an origin here, which means there has to, in a way, be like a patient zero. There has to be an initial combustion vendor who just had the ability so that they knew to try and research to get more vendors who could do that skill. So someone clearly unlocked their abilities in a certain way, and that led them to maybe take the approach of putting these people in water like draws out the ability because that's the other point it's one thing if you if you test the ability of someone who already has it in water it's another thing um to like have this be some sort of a way to actually draw the ability out of someone in the first place if they meet all of the criteria but haven't combustion bent yet why is like putting them in water going to make it happen that's that's an interesting point as well um and you, and you have to go back and think about some of the other things, like Chai C, her bookcase. There were four books mentioned in that chapter. One was the Shoken book, which Yang Chen now has. There was the Lahima book, which was a nice reference, um, but obviously not particularly important at the time. But then the other two books, were they just forgettable, or were you meant to go back to them? One of them was the idea of like sacred circles and how to draw them and, and, and so on. Um, and then the other one was more about sort of like uh, meditation, kind of chi related stuff. And it kind of feels like if that's where the research is now going, there is where your third eye tattoo potentially comes from. If they figure something out about how like uh, the energy is coming through the, this chakra point on the forehead, we can make that easier to direct chi towards if we put a tattoo there. Um, because there's, it's, there's known spiritual properties related to that tattoos. And if we do the right tattoo, we could make something actually happen here. Um, and another point, I, didn't, I don't think I even mentioned this on the stream, is that we know that the Yu Yan archers, um, their technique is spiritual in some way. I'm wondering, might there be some sort of a crossover there as well? That maybe the Yu Yan, in however they develop their skills, their skill might relate somehow to an ability that is very ranged focused and it's about firing something accurately and, and, and I suppose efficiently with an element of spirituality to it. There, there, there could be something to that as well, though it's just obviously pure speculation at this point in time. But what an interesting line, how much discussion you can have about, I mean, a lot of us who tried to develop this technique drowned because it's just so out of the blue, like what, what do you mean by that? But it speaks to the idea that there are potentially other combustion vendors out there. These are the main three that can, that make up unanimity, but likely there are others on the way that I assume Chaisi kept secret because if she feels like the sort of character who wouldn't, even if she was slightly tricked, she wouldn't make it so that they're the only kind of uh, assets, basically. So... This is when Thapa kind of uh, switches things up and realizes that, like, the three combustion vendors, he and the other two, are the key to all of this. Okay, Hancho's paying them for their services, um, but he's kind of like, we could be paid a bit more. Because if, if, if we're doing this and we're the centerpiece of this, we, I think we deserve a little bit more than this. This mission's trickier than we thought it was going to be. And he's basically like, you know, we had a deal, but... Um, now, now that things are involving like the Earth Kingdom and so on, how about we alter that deal um, and so on? Uh, you know, he kind of feels that like, uh, I think our, our value has taken a leap skyward, don't you think? Um, the three of us are, are essential to this operation. So this is where we get the idea. He says, I think paying us our original price 20 fold is good. And Hancha is shocked by this because of course, he feels that, again, he's all about money. So he feels that he's paid them a solid amount to do this. But he's going to make that money back when he get when things stabilize in Bin Ur. And he'll eventually work his way out. Because, again, you have to keep in mind, he's in debt and is trying to sort of rebuild his fortune to pay back those loans that got him this position in the first place. Now he's, in a way, like even further in debt and potentially has to pay them 20 times this large amount 
while still paying back what he has. And he this is the point at which he sort of begins to full on lose it. He begins to sweat. Like this is where the reality of the situation really hits him that he has blundered in 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 overall in this situation. And he's been he's now been able to be manipulated by these three characters who are otherwise just you know combustion benders that all you know about them is their is their abilities but they know their value in this that whatever involvement they had in some sort of project where they developed their skills they have been developed some level of intelligence in that as well they know how to negotiate and they know when not to speak too much about the origin of their abilities um but also because of that, realize how important their abilities are and how valuable they are. So, you know, all, of course, all, all money involved, but um, it's for them, I suppose, they, they what, what was it like? He, he took a big gamble on himself. So he, he gambled with the idea that I can learn this ability and if I learn this ability, I'll get a lot of money. Um, so this is him trying to, to make amends with that. So Hancho again has one of these situations where he kind of thinks like, how did it come to this? Why on my watch as Zongdu has everything gone so wrong for me? This is absolutely like terrible how it's happened. What law had been written into the cosmos that declared he should fail where people just like him had received successes and riches out of their wildest dreams? So he just ultimately is forced to agree. 20 times you'll get your money, but I've realized we've overlooked one thing. So he's kind of like, okay, if I'm going to be taken for a ride here, I might as well use these combustion benders to the full extent of their abilities. If things are, if I'm losing control of things a little bit, even with them, let's actually start taking people out. This will solidify things uh, ultimately. So it, it is a moment where he kind of loses it. Obviously, Thoppa doesn't particularly respect him, but Thoppa seems to actually like that Hansha is going for it here. He's kind of like, ah. That's some true desperation now, isn't it? So, Top is kind of like, okay, wh where do you want me to target? And he's just like, and Hunch is just like, yeah, wh whoever, just just make a show of it. So, uh, Thoppa looks at the other window at the Water Tribe quarter, and is kind of like, okay, there's a Water Tribe district over there. I'll I'll target there. Oh, look, there's some nice houses like uh, in this area. Obviously, if you've been paying attention, who lives in a nice house in the Water Tribe district? Kavik and his parents so that's who's immediately in danger here so that's directly what he's targeting effectively it's straight up Kavik's house so this is where we get the moment here the breathing starts again the next explosion the next combustion blast is about to happen here and we get the slow build up five breaths 10 20 Thapa hit 30 breaths this blast was going to be huge there would barely be a water tribe quarter left 40 breaths <laughs> And then he's like, wait, 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 something's wrong here. What's wrong? Why are you holding back? And it's suddenly, Thoppa's like, I'm not. I, I can barely breathe. Like, I can't get enough air to, uh, to make the technique work. And then all of a sudden, he's really gasping for breath. And he, he basically collapses to the ground. And then suddenly, Hancho realizes that, like, oh, I'm beginning, beginning, beginning to feel like this too. He just collapsed first because he's doing crazy things with his breath. Um, so Hancho is still like active while this is happening. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, it, it feels like, you know, he, 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 the air comes back all of a sudden and then two water tribe men walk into the room and it's like one with a water skin at the ready, a bender and the other, a giant even bigger than Thapa. While the waterbender checked the corners of the room for hidden dangers, the huge man hefted Thapa over his shoulder and carried him away with one arm. He had only the one. A young woman wearing a heavy cloak walked in and is like, hey, Zangdu Hansha, uh, you, you've been busy since we last spoke. And he's like, you, like, what? Because what? obviously to Hansha, Yang Chen is the person who has ruined everything for him. This is the reason why he even has to take action. Why the Earth King might have been involved earlier. Why he felt that the unanimity needs to come into play. It's all been Yang Chen that has ruined his overall plan. And she's just like, yeah, tra trade secrets about how I turned up here again. And he's just like, well, we all just collapsed. Uh, is Thapa dead? And she's like, shh, shh, shh. Unfortunately, I don't have time to chat. You're not the last stop on my list today. 
And that's the end of the chapter, that just like that, Yang Chen has come in and has taken out Thapa, the most powerful of the three members of unanimity. And she's also captured Hansha as well. And she's basically saying that, like, the other two, uh, Zhao, Zhao Yun and uh, Ying Su, they're next. And we'll basically see that we wrap this up, this incident here, very, very quickly now. Um, the, we, are, we are not having a protracted battle with combustion vendors here. They are being taken out in a very specific way, as we'll discuss here in a second. Uh, and the focus is going to be more about sort of who does and does not know about the existence of them and the idea that firebenders can theoretically have this wild ability that can effectively change the world. That's the key point here. It is not cool action scenes involving combustion vendors necessarily, but the threat to, in a way, to world politics, that the existence of benders of this high level and how the other nations will act. How would Faishan react if he knew benders like this existed? How would the Fire Lord, how would the High Chief of the Water Tribe react? That's more of what you're meant to think about with combustion bending. Unless, how many giant battles can we have against combustion benders? Because to a degree, we know how uh, more normal battles against combustion vendors go. You can barely get out of cover, you have to strike from a distance, you have to be very careful about it because it's very difficult to directly oppose their power. It doesn't mean they're like undefeatable, but those battles always have to happen in a certain way. So in this case, it's like, oh wow, Yang Chen has managed to sneak up on them somehow and clearly do something related to the air in the room because it seems like she has managed to affect both of them at the same time not just one or the other so she's not doing the like the here technique of the sphere around someone's head she seems to have just removed the air from the room it is what they confirm in later on i don't think it's much of a spoiler to confirm that that's what it is but we'll we'll get how yang chen feels about having to in a way resort to tactics that like verge on you know like killing people here in that if she had kept the air out of the room a little bit longer by the sounds of the way Thop is described as he falls to the ground like eyes rolling into the back of his head he could have died like Hansha thinks he's dead so um you know brutal tactics here to take down such dangerous benders but it's um really 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 interesting and like I said you know that's the end of the chapter there I like this. I don't have too much disappointment about the fact that we didn't have like a a knock knockdown, you know, a drag out fight against combustion vendors. Um, I appreciate just that they are basically telling us that it is a secret for now, but that we will eventually learn what's going on with combustion vendors. Just that line about that they had to do training, investment went into it, time, people drowned and died trying to learn the ability but it worked. I took the gamble and it paid off. The Just the, the differences, like these guys don't have third eye tattoos and it seems like they're not as energy efficient benders either. So improvements obviously seem like they're going to be made and I'm interested in going to the next book. Will we see that happen with maybe the next batch of combustion benders if there are any more or what happens? But there's a few very important things that still need to happen in the book. We've got like, what, five chapters to go. We're very much into the final countdown here for the book. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this very, very important chapter. How surprising was it that the combustion benders were taken out this easily? At least Thapa here. We'll see what happens with the others in the coming chapters. But other than that, that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.